What's up, everybody? This is the Pardon My Jerk podcast. I'm Kyle here with Dunk, and we're coming at you today to give our live update on the 21.3 announcement, and it is a doozy. Ain't that right, Dunk? Yeah, man, it looks good. It's, uh, it's a lot more creative than the last two workouts have been. That We'll say that. That's for sure. Yeah, so. um, but before we dive into that, um, first of all, shout out to our listeners this week in Turkey. Uh, we are uh, more and more countries are starting to roll in. It's a pretty cool experience for us. So uh, we appreciate all those listens. Um, and I tell you what, it's been so exciting for us uh, seeing people from all over the world turn into our tune into our podcast. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys. So tell us about uh, tell us about CrossFit, wherever you're from. Tell us about your gym. Uh, tell us what you think of our podcast, uh, what you guys would like to hear, any questions you might have. Uh, we're seeing people from Slovenia, Slovenia, uh, Ireland, uh, Turkey, uh, Germany, all over the place. We would love to hear from you guys. So thank you very much. Uh, go ahead and shoot us a DM on, uh, on Instagram, or you can shoot us a message at the pardon my jerk Facebook page. Just dropped you, drop that one on you. <laughs> yeah. No, Yes, uh, some pretty cool stuff rolling in from uh, from our sponsor of the show, Anchor, uh, our staging platform for the podcast. Um, so anyway, uh, first, before we dive into 21.3, let's talk about our experience with 21.2 last week. So how'd it go for you, Don? I thought it went pretty well. I, I died a little bit. Uh, it was way, I expected this workout to be way easier than it was when we did it in 17, 2017, not way easier, but like I would feel better throughout and I would feel better afterwards as far as like the low back soreness and everything. But that was not the case at all. Like I, I hit a wall to a point I did not hit when I did it in 2017, the snatches were just as hard as they were in 2017. And I was just as sore as I was in 2017. Yeah, I was surprised at how sore I was redoing oh, I expected, it. I expected like it was we, we that was like the first time we'd really done snatches, dumbbell snatches. It was like that was when it got introduced. So I just assumed we had been we've been doing it now for four years. And now we're uh, so I'm like my body's used to it. I'm not going to be as miserably sore the next day as I was, and I was just as sore, if not more. Yeah, I've do probably done this workout close to 10 times since they announced it in 2017. And uh, I was also shocked at how obliterated my lower back was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lesson to be learned there on, like, technique in the dumbbell snatch. That surprised me. Yeah, but I'm, We could talk about technique, but it's like, I mean, let's just get through it, you know? Like you could you could sit there and focus on doing your like your power snatches or whatever and trying to get a little more bend in the leg than you typically would, but I mean it's supposed to go fast. I don't know if for me, I don't think technique would have been the the saving grace for that. So much of this one, and I and I knew it going into it. I mean I've done this workout enough times, but it was surprising to me how like the intricacies of the burpee box over. Like if you want to get a good time. On those those burpee box overs are are where your workout is made is is made and lost right. So the thing that surprised me it's like yeah effort is obviously important but so much of it is just movement economy like just how well are you moving on and how much uh, movement are you wasting and that's what yeah. I kind of came to found out like when I shaved a ton of time off it on my second attempt. Um, that was great. I was like, oh, yeah, all I did was just not waste as much time on the burpees. And if anything, put in less effort in terms of pacing. Were you feeling worse after the second time your retest than you were the, um, when you first did the workout? I felt worse after the first time. Which it's just, you... dude, it, it was the same thing in like 19.1 when I redid that. And it's like once you get so far out in front of your previous pacing, you're like kind of in no man's land and you're like, I have no idea how to face this. Cause I died last time when I was right. at this point, <laughs> you know, so your uh, first, your first attempt was 1530 and then you got it to 1240. Roughly. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. That is yeah. absurd. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's just, 
came down to just like how uh, efficient I wasn't. And I could have taken more off. Uh, that was like when I went back and watched my video, I was like, oh, there's there's plenty of holes in here that you could have plugged. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm definitely going to remember that for, for future burpee box over workouts. Like you can put in less effort and, like, or you can move slower, but just better economy of movement and you can move so, so faster much faster. In the long run, yeah. You know, I see, uh, I, I thought I was working the burpees pretty good. I feel like I might've gone out just a smidge too hot because like i had a good pace i want to say like i had a good pace of being unbroken on pretty much everything up to the round of 40 and then that round of 50 hit and it was just like you know and then that you, you get to those 15 burpee box overs at the very end and you expect you to be able to like kind of just put the pedal to the floor and go and i had i had no gas no gas to push it at the end yeah but so much of that is pacing right like uh you don't like you're like oh yeah i probably came out too hot but the but the that workout i would almost rather come out a little too hot than come out like then pace it too much because you're just gonna have so much just time coming out the back end on that if you yeah if you just mess around on those burpees yeah i mean i improved my my original score by almost three minutes so like <laughs> there you go like it like it was a fine pace like it was it got the job done but like uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I I wish I could have pushed a little harder on the last round. The last round was much slower than my previous four round paces. Which I is- observed that with like a lot of people uh, this year in our gym, where like like they pace it pr- pretty much perfect, and then they got to that round of fifty, and all of a sudden they break up that round of fifty into like five, six, seven sets. Like, yeah. it was just like yeah, just a take a little bit off of it and you would, you would have pretty much hit that line that you want to hit like that. Perfect. Yep. Because like I, I, I observing this, I was like, honestly, it's that fourth round of burpees. I think is when it's time to go full send because Mm -hmm. I I look at like a workout, like you get to that final set of 15 burpees. If you've still got that gas in the tank to shave off, like go 20, 25, 30 seconds faster. It's like, then you didn't put in your full, like you had more to give. Right. You know what I mean? I hate with those ones, like when I get to that last bit and it's like, oh, I flew through the burpees. And it's like, well, then you could have gone faster through the previous 60 burpees, you know? Unless you're one of these freak shows that finished in like nine minutes and those guys just fly through the burpees no matter what. Bro, the state of the, the CrossFit Games is is insane for like what's coming up the pipeline, man. The, the top two times were teenage girls. Yeah, that's bizarre. I, I I did not expect that. Like, and they were young teenage girls too. Like, what wasn't one of them sixteen? Yeah, well, yeah, one I was the one the I, and I I apologize. Well, I got to look up their names because I don't want to just talk. But like, uh, like young teenage girls, like uh, like sixteen. Uh, yeah, so not even I like was... aged in their age group. Which is yeah. Wild. I, I, so you got their names up. Right, let's make sure uh, you give me say names. give me one second. But uh, <clears throat> and it's not just them, man. Um, like Dolan Pepper, man. I I feel like I can't escape this dude on my social media feed. You know, he's a he's oh, a yeah. teenage a teenage boy, teenage young man, uh, snatching over three hundred pounds. It's absurd. And on and on the front page of the leaderboard in open scores. Just, I never heard of him before this year. He was he won the games. Is that what? Uh, I believe so. I believe he won the games in the in the team division, and I want to say this is his first year competing as an as an individual, like in the eight like eighteen and over category. I believe. So but, Emma Emma Carey was the one that had the fastest time. She's seventeen years old. That's it. I don't know who the second place was. I think her name was Maddie something, but I can't. Um, well, in any regard, uh, there's some interesting stuff that just, you know, while we're talking about the open leaderboard, some real interesting stuff that's kind of shaken out. Uh, first of all, my dude, uh, Noah Olsen, is making me look very intelligent. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I got to take that clip. I got to repost that clip of me calling my shot on that one because 
He's currently sitting in second place overall, uh, four points behind Jeff Adler. Um, I'm not tremendously familiar with Jeff Adler. Uh, I do know he is a monster with the barbell. So this may that this may be forgiving to him, but everybody knows Noah Olson with these uh these pretty dense volume gymnastics stuff is going to do pretty well. I agree. Yeah, I think he'll do well. I think he'll do real well in twenty one point three. I don't know how well he'll do with the complex compared yeah. to the, the top elite athletes. So I don't I don't know if he's going to be able to jump Jeffrey Adler, but like there might not be pretty, enough meat on that bone for him to jump Jeffrey Adler, also, especially when you consider the lift. Yeah, it's also pretty close. Like the top ten. Like usually there's like like a hundred point swing in there. They're all within like thirty points of each other. Really, it's like twentieth place is at a hundred and eight points. So like Well, especially seeing two workouts now thrown in together, we could mm-hmm. we could see stuff really get shook up. But um another person of note, uh, I just want to make sure you specifically know about is my dude Brent Fikowski is currently sitting in tenth place in the open. Although uh, there was a little bit of controversy regarding his 21.2 score. Did you see this? No, I didn't. Uh, Apparently he was working with a box that was a little bit shrunk in terms of uh, distance apart. Really? Which there's nothing, you know, in the rules that states like how wide your box has to be. Uh, I didn't see the video, but from my understanding, it it sounded like he was pretty much working with like a standard like, uh, like plyo box. Mm-hmm. Not like the CrossFit gym 20 by 24 by 30 box. So the ones that sort of pyramid, yeah. it's a little bit more narrow at the top, I, I believe so. So I think he's getting a little, uh, catching a little, you he know, could, back he on catch, that. Maybe catch a little heat from like his fellow competitors. He shouldn't catch any heat from like CrossFit, like still jumping to a box. He's working right. from home. Do they have to right. go buy the rogue boxes, you know? And then um, interesting with that, with the announcement today, it's kind of interesting that I believe all three Panchik brothers are on page one of the leaderboard. Yeah, they are. I just saw them, which is kind of crazy, too. It is, yeah. And they all did well. Yeah, I just wish – and I, I said this last – I think I said this last week on the podcast. I think they should have switched. And now that I know the workouts, I definitely think they should have switched those announcements with the Panchik brothers and Medeiros and Quant. But Medeiros and Quant doing this workout? Doing this one, the last workout, I think would have been much, much, much better. Why do you think that? Okay, so a few reasons. So just going off the standings from the 2020 CrossFit Games, the two men to beat in the men's field would be Quant and Medeiros. Yeah. Like, just they finished second and third. So Fraser's out of the, out of, out of the mix. So now the guys to beat are those, those are the two guys sitting at the top of the mountain currently. Right. So let's make them the, the, the finale. You right. know, if you're going to, if you're going to make the finale American men, it should be those two. Um, two, I think it was pretty clear from the jump that Scott Panchik was going to whoop everyone's ass in this workout. Like yeah. you're putting a heavy, clean complex. Okay. Well, that's, that's you're, you're gonna, gonna win that one by a, a wide margin, yeah. Right, and then he's probably also going to win the the squats, bar muscle ups, and thrusters. Um, and then this would have been more. It would have been more fun to see Medeiros and Quant go at it because you're seeing a slightly closer margin in terms of of strength. Yeah, I would have liked it that better, but maybe it's like scheduling or something like that too. I think they would have been better off putting these these three the first workout. If you're talking like in terms of like relative importance of the athletes and it would have been cool to watch. It would have been cool to watch the females go after 17 or 21.2. Yeah. Especially Especially especially, Yeah. Especially since that first workout was so such a Carrie Pierce workout. Yes. And not a Chrissy Arrow workout. Yeah. As soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Just so we're keeping like poor Carrie Pierce that just being thrown into the fire. Like, yeah, I mean, like, hey, we know you're the second fittest American woman, but like, you have at it with this one with Carrie, Pier- like <laughs> the most Carrie Pierce workout ever made. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so they actually dropped. I'm looking at the female board now. Uh, they actually dropped the young woman, um, that was at the top before. I don't know what happened there. So, her, oh no, sorry. Name? Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm looking at the overall. Sorry, my mistake. My mistake. Uh, so Emma Carey currently sits uh, first overall. 
uh, in front of Tia freaking Claire Toomey or <laughs> Tia Toomey um, or Kristen Holta, who regrettably I mentioned was injured uh, on our Power Rankings uh, podcast. Yeah, you did say that. Uh, is sitting at tied for third right now with a fellow Norwegian, Andrea Solberg. Um, yeah, some real interesting stuff. I did call, though, in the open extravaganza that the winner of the game or the open this year was going to be someone that's totally my, off the radar for yeah. the women's division. My God, this would be so far off the radar that. <laughs> that a child <laughs> one? <laughs> yeah. Goodness, this girl's still in high school. <laughs> yeah, uh, just flipping down the uh, flipping down the list to see see some interesting names. Carl Saunders sitting in twelfth again, just a freaking animal. Haley Adams man. up there, man, your favorite. Who? Haley Adams sitting in eighth. I mean, we were given two very Haley Adams friendly workouts, and we get we we're given another one this week too. Um, once again, this this has been. I'm so glad they put a heavy barbell into this. Because yeah. this has been not the small person open. This has been the light person open. If you're like a, like a skinny athlete, um, if you're an athlete that's not carrying a lot of additional fat or, or body mass or, uh, or lean muscle, this has been a great open for you. Yeah. There's not you know, any uh, cardio. There's no rower. So like, like I said, no advantage to a person that's over like five foot seven. But it's like, but that's why you're also seeing, um, and this is this is this is not a shot across the bow at Bethany or at excuse me, um, Danielle Brandon or Brent Fikowski. It's just their build. They're longer, skinnier athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like Spencer Hendel would have done exceptional in this year's Open. Right. Like a, an athlete that's uh, just not carrying a, a ton of just additional mass. Like that's why you're seeing Fikowski do so exceptionally well in this, because it's it's a lighter athlete open you know what i mean well yeah we saw saw sam quant who is noticeably jacked yeah. struggle a little bit struggle a little bit with that uh at least right next to madero's right on 21.2 dude hats off to madero's man does uh 21.2 does the live announcement he's like i'm good yeah, <laughs> did, like, yeah, did not redo good. it just submitted that score well good like you would have thought that that would have been like a pretty i mean it still was a great time but like you, you would have thought you'd been right there at the top based off of the 2017 numbers. Yeah. He was like, like third in the world, according to the 2017 numbers with that score. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little surprised Emma McQuaid's only in 37th. I would have thought this would have been a really, really good open for her. Um, Paige Semenza, 42nd place. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought she would have been that high. And then Danny Spiegel, 46th place overall. Surprised by that? Very surprised by that. Just because she's just that, she's, oh, a, she's a large athlete, you know. Yeah, but I mean, she is a, a handstand machine. That's true, but she's a squatter, right? Like she's she's all about these these big legs, and we've seen no legs until this week, and still, this week it's ninety five pound squats. Yeah, and in open standards, not really that many reps. No, no, it's not. I really like this workout. Just for like they. It's different. They changed it up. They're not just doing like a toes the bar or chest the bar. It's kind of working your way up the ladder. I was really, really slightly depressed when they, they put toes the bar as 30 and then added the three rounds. I was like, God, <laughs> I get to like 32 reps and just stop. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of laughed at myself when he announcement when he, when Castro announced it, because it was like, we have all this stuff on the table that we could really see uh, based off of like the equipment list that was, and Castro's like, we're just doing all of them. Like, we're just going to do all the movements as much as I can jam into this into this workout that we can possibly do. That's what we're doing this week. But I'm yeah, excited for gonna, this one. I thought he was going to throw it like a dumbbell thruster in there just to be like, all right, we're gonna do every like you said, do everything. Right. We got it on the list. We're going to do it. So after watching this workout be done by an elite level athlete twice, though, uh, by elite athletes twice. Um, I think this is an awesome affiliate workout. I think this is a terrible workout for elite level athletes. I don't like this at all for them. You, because they're not going to be, everybody's going to go unbroken, uh, except 
like the bar muscle ups will be a, a bit of a kind of like a time break for the top athletes, but a lot of them are going to be able to go unbroken. Right. It's like, it's really going to come down to like literally how fast you do the squatting. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, everyone's going to go unbroken on the toes of bar. Everyone's going to go unbroken on the chest of bars. And then I, I feel like you might still see some like free shows that go like oh, yeah. unbroken on the bar muscle ups or like, 25 and five or some crazy shit like that you know what i mean dakota rager is definitely going unbroken all three oh yeah i want to watch his video <laughs> who else who else we think cody anderson he could probably do it um colin logan collins logan collins yeah cody An- cody anderson is going to blow this workout out of the water that's yeah. this is an awesome workout for him but logan collins is a good one he's a real small athlete um pound for pound extremely strong um Haley Adams is gonna blow this out of the water. This is an this is a softball for her. Tia, uh, she, Tia is gonna do well on this one too. This is a yep, she's real good at gymnastics. Just this is one yeah, of those she's ones. A, yeah. Uh she's an exceptional gymnast, and that bar is gonna move so fast for her. This is one of those ones where I'm upset that Frazier retired just because I wouldn't see how much he would push this and if he could do all three rounds unbroken. Yeah, I would this I thought the I had the exact same thought. I'm like, this would be a great one to see Fraser take a shot at. And yeah. because he's so, like, he's so insane, I, I just see him, like, chasing Rager, tra- chasing Collins, chasing Noah Olsen on this workout and I just try, he, trying to, like, yeah. He'd get it in his head that, like, all right, somebody's going to do it unbroken. So do I. Right. I need to do it now, too. Right. So, But this also might be one of those ones, too. Honestly, the more I think about it, is it might not necessarily be faster to do the bar muscle ups unbroken because you're going to sit at the top and rest. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it might be one of those ones where it's fast. If, if you could go unbroken, it's faster to go at fit, just go 15 and 15, you know? Also the way they did it on the announcements, not how guys are going to do it in their gyms. Like they had them going back to the pull-up bar and racing to the bar. Like that's not how people are going to do it. On the contrary. Uh, that's actually a standard. Oh yeah. So I looked into it. Uh, you have to put a piece of tape underneath of your pull-up bar. And then you have to put a piece of tape eight feet away from that piece of tape. And your bar needs to stay behind that. Wow. Which I like, I like, but that's also making it even more difficult to sort of like get more time out of this one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, I like that it's more standardized. I, get, I like that. You know, we made, made it kind of a gamesy athlete or a gamesy workout where it's like, turn it into a little bit of a spectacle kind of you know what I mean? also but i i also don't like okay like going back to 19.1 19, the wall ball and and rower one i'm mm-hmm. not a fan of like when people do well in a workout because they may, they figure out the best way to game the transitions yeah you know what i mean like let's just test fitness so i i, I like that they're they're standardizing that which is kind of cool yeah um gonna suck for me and given my situation for setup but uh yeah yeah yeah. you're gonna have a a, a wild time trying to figure that one out yeah um but this is a this for like the normal everyday athletes this is a cool workout i like it a lot and i like that you're working your way up to the bar muscle ups right like you're getting progressively harder yeah um and then we saw a new thing introduced to the open this week. Uh, and that is a heavy barbell complex, which we have never seen before. And I am I was excited curious if we if we'd seen a complex. I, I, I don't I remember I don't remember ever doing one, so but I wasn't sure if they did one 2010 or whatever. Uh to my knowledge, that's a negative. Uh we've seen a heavy clean, heavy yeah. clean and jerk. I think, right? I think it was the heavy like the met one maxes we've seen. We saw one rep max in 2015 and 2018. Have they never done a one rep snatch? I don't think so. But they should stay away from that. They should stay away from that. Yeah, and it's another one where it's like because the weights aren't as high, you're going to see more log jam again. So going back to like what I don't like about this workout for elite athletes, um, you're going to see like a you're going to see a big log jam. Like there's not a whole. It's going to come down to one set. You're going to see a lot of ties. You know what I mean? Because there's just not enough meat there to like spread people out. Which is unfortunate because like a time of what did Panchek do it in today? It was like seven minutes and 45 seconds or something. 
I think it was like 757, I think. Or something so you're going like to see a lot of times like right around like the 730 time. And then it's like if you finish at 732 as opposed to 728, that drops you like 50 places. Oh, more than that. I would, I yeah, bet you yeah. a thousand plus places. Yeah. Which is, which is wild. Cause that's, that's, you ran to the bar too slow or your hand slipped off the pull up bars. Just, just some one unfortunate thing will drop you hundreds of places. Right. Well, especially if you're a person like us, right. That's, that's, you know, I guess a normal everyday athlete too, where you're like that, that difference of five seconds when we're just right in that, the cluster of everybody, that five second yeah. difference could be massive changes True. Yeah. you know um i don't know i get i don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing in that regard but i just don't like it for the the best the best open workouts are the ones that the everyday person can do and they can play in that sandbox but it's going to offer the elite athletes the best opportunity to express their level of fitness right so the best workouts are the ones where it's like we saw a ton of people do it rx but we saw the the elite athletes smash all that, those, those times, you know, yeah. and they still were floored afterwards, like 20. Uh, how, how would you go about making that the case for this workout? Would you make more reps, heavier, heavier barbell? What? I feel like heavier barbell would have been the play. Probably. Like 135, Probably. 95 or 85, whatever it is for females. That'd be terrible. Right. right. That's probably the move I would, I, I would really, think. You really or like can't just go... add, increase the volume, like maybe go like 50 toes to bar, 40 chest to bar, 30 bar muscle ups. Yeah. But then, I feel like at that point, you're, to like, think about that. You're, like, you're gearing way towards the elite athlete because those 50 toes to bar are going to, that's a lot of toes to bar for average athletes. Even Bro, they've average. done 50 toes to bar before in 14.2. The chipper workout they did. Yeah. I'm so saying, we, like, we established seven years ago that that's doable, you know? I got you. And that was before they had a scale division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Long and cross it back then. Yeah, right? So, yeah, I, I, I'd have to actually think about that answer. But to me, that's what you could do. Because yeah. if you make it 50 toes of bar and, f- like, I don't know if necessarily everybody goes unbroken. Maybe. Mm, but no. maybe, I don't know. But. Part of it too is maybe make the bar. You're like your call. Maybe make the bar a little heavier. Um, maybe, but I don't. I don't always like using that as like the answer to making a workout better. I don't. Heavier is not always better. But have, they don't typically do heavier in the open, which is why this. I feel like it would have been pretty cool to do it for this one. Because I mean, most of your your standard thruster workouts are all at 95. Like they don't change it up very often. Yeah, I would have appreciated kind of a change of, of pace on that one too. I don't I, I think that would have been a kind of a cool move to take those thrusters and make them 135. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um that's honestly probably the move to be honest, like is make those thrusters keep the everything exactly the same and make it 135. Because now that bar, like elite athletes are still gonna go unbroken. Yeah. But now it's just a how fast can you go unbroken mm-hmm. at 95 pounds. The elite athletes are all going to go unbroken, and it's going to be an all-out sprint unless you're yeah. easy, Muhammad. They're going to bounce it up and down like it's an air squat. Right. You know, like Scott Panchik, it was like insane. It was like there was no bar there at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the thrusters, not even the front squats. Yeah, I think I think 135, 95 would have been would have been cool to see. I'm I'm happy. I'm just happy that they didn't just do the typical chest to bar thruster workout. They they added a yeah. little bit to it. I Me was, too. I was I, I was, was nervous about, about it. that. I was nervous that they were going to do it, and they would have made. I've enjoyed this open so far, but it, that would have just made it. It's been like, all right, another tr- thruster chest bar workout on top mm-hmm. of a repeat workout on top of like probably the most boring workout that we've had in the open. <laughs> yeah, I think I I get kind of the sense that Castro's straying away from that because we haven't seen that now uh, in a while like the straight up thruster chest bar. Um, I think he's kind of starting to want to get a little bit more creative. What did they do last year for the last workout? That was the partition as needed workout. Oh yeah. yeah you're the right. wall balls, muscle ups, calorie row one. Yeah. So um, I'd be remiss if, if we didn't at least talk about this a little bit, but for you personally, um, as like a pretty regular, you know, uh, an above averagely fit guy, but a normal gym goer, 
What is your mm. strategy going into this one? How are you thinking about you're going to break it down? And this uh, is what the 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 um the disclaimer that uh, upper body gymnastics work is not a strength of yours. Yeah. So barbell unbroken on everything. Um, and then really it's just get through, get through the gymnastics stuff for me, maybe three sets of 10 on the toes of the bar. And that'll be good for me. That, that's like, that's the goal. And that's like a good goal, but it'd probably realistically be more like two sets of 10 and kind of get through the last 10. And then the chest of bars is it's kind of the same deal. I've got a little bit of a wonky shoulder right now. So like doing, doing high, I, I don't do the butterfly right now. I'm just doing like regular kipping, kipping pull-ups. So it really get through the barbell as fast as you can. And then just struggle your way through the bar, uh, the rig for me. Are you going to, so are you, you're pretty, are you pretty confident you're going to get to the bar muscle-ups? Yeah. Um, I can do chest bars just fine. It's just, I, I kip, I don't do big sets and like I'll, I'll, I'll stay on the bar. I'm not going to like back off and walk away for three minutes, you know? Yeah. I, don't I mean, think... that's, that's definitely the move I've learned, especially with like toes to bar is it's faster to do very small sets with very, very small rest. So yeah. 15 sets of two where you drop weight one or two seconds and pop back up is much faster oh, yeah. as long as you're disciplined. Right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense to burn yourself out with a set of 10 if you can only do solid sets of like five because you're going to walk away like fatigued. You're not going to want to get back up on the bar and you're just going to sit there and look at it for a while as opposed to just being like, all right, one, drop down, back up right away, you know? Yeah. So. Um, my sort of approach going into this one is different. That's why I want to make sure we brought this up. Um Unbroken. My plan is obviously is go unbroken on the thr on the front squats, unbroken on the thrusters. Hopefully, um, I should be able to hold that. And then I think I'm just going to send it, man. <laughs> Honestly, like I think I'm going to just take the risk. Like Panchik was talking about it in the you know after the workout. Like you know, just take a risk on this one. And I think I'm going to try it, give it a shot. So toes to bar. I'm going to try and go unbroken. Um, I've done 30 unbroken before. Um, as and then if i can't i'll get deep into the 20s so if i can't go unbroken it'll drop off i'll shake it out for a couple of seconds and then just finish well I and mean, then you... what's that go ahead go ahead and then the chest of bars i know i can do unbroken um i'll do those unbroken and then just hopefully just gather enough time so make the bar muscle ups suck less uh or give myself time for those bar muscle ups so I'm, I'm okay at bar muscle ups. I can straight, I've done, I know I can do 10 unbroken at that point in my life. I will not be able to. Yeah. Um, so I'm almost thinking just like quick sets of three is going to be kind of the move there. Yeah. Um, I'm not as good as you as, as at doing a set, popping off, <sighs> taking a breath and popping back on. I'm just not good at that. So we'll see how those bar muscle ups go. Yeah, 30 is I mean, a yucky I, number. I'm not going to finish the 30. There's not a chance in the world. I, I've done about three bar muscle ups in the past year. So, yeah, that's, and that's just like a breakdown on a rep scheme. There's a whole another level of breakdown as far as like your technique goes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, if I can get halfway through the bar muscle ups, I, and like I said, I don't even know how long it's going to take me to do the first two rounds. You watch these guys, and you're like, oh man, I can get to the bar muscle ups with, at 10 minutes or whatever but these guys you can't judge it off of them so who yeah. knows when i'm actually going to get to the the bar muscle gymnastics for me is such a such a hit or miss part of my crossfit life yeah and then um this complex that he has programmed this is kind of interesting because just the the limited sort of scope of what i've seen so far i'm like i would have thought people would have been much heavier on this I was thinking, so, Pan, I was thinking, Pantech was hitting, gonna hit like 340, 340. Oh yeah, yeah. I would have thought like yeah, 365, 350, something like that for for yeah. Pantech. Um, I, so I'm like, maybe this workout's kind of getting people in a worse kind of way than we might think that that it is. You know, I just, it doesn't feel like a leg burner type workout, so I don't know why the numbers would be so low. Like it's a lot of legs, but it's not. It's light, and you get that rest. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
so I'm kind of going into this one. I, I have a number in my head. I'm hoping to, to hit. Um, it was interesting that we saw with the Panzer brothers, they went, they weren't even doing the complex. They were just like doing squat clean and jerks. And they're like, I have a number in my head. I want to hit. I just yeah. got to want to get close to that. Why, why waste extra effort doing the deadlift and the hang clean? I'm like, I guess that, that does make sense. I was, I was surprised. They weren't really hitting like the jerk though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, maybe their shoulders were just fried. And they're, you know, they're like that. Yeah. But I would look at that as like a central nervous system thing. Like, I just want to get my CNS primed to handle heavy weights. Like, my shoulders yeah. are warmed up. Now let's go into a clean and jerk specific, just get used to getting heavy weights over it, you know? Right, yeah. Like, I'm not going to jump right into hitting 275 without But I, I, I'm glad. I do like that strategy that we saw with them of, like, don't do the complex. Just do clean and jerks. And yeah. then, because you know whereabouts in your head what you want to hit. And as soon as that bar starts feeling heavy, okay, now we'll start, you know, only take two, maybe three attempts at that, at the actual complex. Well, you're going to so warm that up was kinda, a little bit prior to as well. So, um, and then the one thing too, that I, I mentioned to my wife when we were watching it, I was like, put the change plates on like the, your one and a quarters and your two and a halves, right? Cause you see it at the games all the time that again, you're going to see this. Like you're going to see this monstrous log jam at 275 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, and at 245 and 225 and you all know, the easy women, numbers one, you get to 125, 155, you're going to see these massive clusters. And if like you're a female and you just take that bar from 155 to 160, like that's going to jump you in front of all those people, you know? So that's like a big one for me. It's like, uh whatever i do i want to i want there to be either a decimal point or a zero on the end of that number yeah you know because yeah. that's just gonna you know throwing on those one and a quarters is a two and a half pound difference but right. it's gonna jump you out in front of all this and it doesn't make it doesn't make that big of a difference it's gonna jump you out in front of all those people right. so i'm happy i have those <laughs> i don't know if our my gym has them i know we've got two and a half just go by <laughs> go by yeah I mean, we're, we're, I'm lucky enough. I live next to, you know, right by York Barbell. I can run up there and grab those pretty much whenever I want. True. Yeah. What 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 way do you think you're gonna you're gonna hit? If I hit, I think three fifteen is on the table for me. Um, Power clean. If I hit three fifteen, I'll be like pretty okay with that. Power clean or a full clean. Power cleans, but yeah, I'm not going to squat that. But I, I was, I was kind of like shocked by the, like they were all doing full cleans. Yeah, they've got better knees than me. That's true. That is very true. But you know what? Now that I think about it, honestly, we saw um, Panchek put up 311. Mm -hmm. Which, side note, just so you know, that that clock applies to when you start the lift, not when you finish it. So yes, you have yes, yes. you have seven minutes to get that bar off the ground, not finish that last. Right. If you started so, it at like six fifty nine, you're you're yes. good to get your rep. Which is that's very important. But uh, it's now that I'm just thinking about it. It's very surprising me that Panchik only did three eleven, or that Easy Muhammad failed three fifteen when we saw clean and jerks at three fifteen at the end of a workout last year in the Open. Yeah, five of them. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. pretty surprising. Yeah, yeah. That, so that makes you wonder, like, what the workout's actually going to do to your body. Right. Yeah, concerning. <laughs> yeah, yes. I want to hit. I'd like to hit three hundred, but I don't know at this point. Yeah, you could probably get knock out three hundred. I think I it, mean, it, it seems so doable to me, but yeah, this one was seems is looks like it could blow you up more than you think. Chester or thrusters and chest bars always blow me up more than I expect them to. So, especially when they're with each other. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, um, just to, to sort of wrap things up on this one, uh, to put a sort of bow on, we haven't done this workout yet, but how are you feeling just about the state of the 2021 open? Was this, was this a valid test? Was it a broad and inclusive test? Um, you know, did, is, was this one uh, adequate for the high level athletes or was it just like, the elites are going to get in no matter what is was the, this was just a good one for the affiliates not for the elites what do you think i think uh a lot of that is true like i think 
all the affiliates or all the elites just they're going to get in like the top 10 percent is not not that difficult for those guys they're, they're more looking at like the top three percent which so they're they're fine uh i thought it was i thought 21.2 and then 21.3 and 4 were good workouts for affiliates 21.1 just didn't hit for me yeah so, um, yeah 21.1 kind of i i 21.2 is a great workout 21.2 should have been the first workout, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I think 21.1, if you just make that the first workout, that that changes a lot. Um, I 21.1 hurts this test a lot because I just think it it, it wasn't – it just wasn't a super great test, but it, it also depends on what your goals were, right? If you're looking at the, the elite athletes and you're like, well, they're going to move on no matter what, so it's, this isn't super relevant – then I, you know, it just it, felt 21.1 felt like it was geared towards the people that are at home. That is well, home Castro workout. said that he was yeah. totally trained. He was on uh, Jason Lydon's podcast and, um, and he said openly like, yeah, it's not an accident this, that 21.1 was a workout that anybody can do in their garage. But why, why was 21.1 that way? And like these last two, I mean, they are, like we've seen people do them in their living rooms, but they're not specifically geared towards the garage athlete. That's why I was extremely shocked we saw one rep max. Like I was I shocked that I didn't think we would see bar muscle ups because it yes. the equipment list said a place for pull ups. Like not bar muscle ups. Yeah, a place for bar muscle ups and a place for pull ups is two very different things. Very different, right? Especially if you're one of, if you're talking about people training in their garage or their mm -hmm. backyard, you know, or yeah. their basements. Right. Like a yeah. lot of these people, even with the home gyms with a pull up bar, they're training in their freaking basement where it has a seven foot overhead, you know, like you can do pull ups on like one of those old playground sets with like the wood like handles. You're not doing bar muscle ups and chest bars on those. Yes. So that was very shocking to me. Yeah, I was, I was surprised that they they put that that level of gymnastics in to the to this. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they catch some blowback on that too. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, if, if that if they were going to do it this way, they should have said, "Be like, you need to be able to do pull ups, toes to the bar, chest to the bar, muscle ups, all of it." Right. I, I guess they didn't want to show their hand that much, but that's what I was saying. Like, just because they there was probably a degree of like we want to make sure we're testing heavy weight like strength as well, right? So we yeah. did the one rep max, and I think the probably the more effective way to do that is thrusters at 135 and 95 yeah or probably yeah and 135 no one 95 max. what's that and no one rep max yeah i just that's tough man that's 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 really hard for the especially like not only is it you need to be an athlete with a bar you now need to be an athlete with a bar and weights you need to be an athlete with a bar and lots of weights right bumper bu preferably bumper plates and Right. And you need to be an athlete with lots of bumper plates or this is going to get real messy. Yeah, especially right. go, especially going overhead. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. Yeah. It's not like you're doing a one of max deadlift. Right. Um, Cause there's, there's, if, if you're a person that's as that's blessed enough or lucky enough to have uh, weights at home to do the open, we're now saying they also need to be much more expensive plates and much, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that shock it, I'm not super agitated about it because it doesn't affect me, but yeah. I can understand why maybe some people would be a little uh, affected by that. And it's like, okay, so now maybe I'm like, all right, well, I got, I'm just going to have to do this open workout at gold's gym. Well, right. my gold's gym doesn't have bumper plates either. You know, like, yeah, most standard like globo gyms don't. Right. So. Uh, at least in my experience, I think that's changing a little bit, but in my it, experience, it, yeah, I haven't seen it. It is, but it's not, it's not like a standard yet. Like, right. You so don't play, you don't got very many. So I think I, these last, these last, I guess, three technically workouts, um, I think made it a much more well-rounded, uh, mm -hmm. much more well-rounded open. Um, definitely. I don't know. I would, looking at this one and kind of, you know, if you, if I just sport all the cards out on the table and looked at it from a, from a macro perspective, I'd probably call this a, a weaker open. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't, I, I don't blame 
that on limitations in terms of equipment or anything like that either. I think you could have made this a more broad, inclusive, broad and inclusive test with the equipment they had. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. Um, I thought they did okay. Okay. With what they were, with what they had to work with. Like I said, these last two, these are good workouts. I think we can all agree that 17.1 was a good workout when they released it the first time around. So. Yeah. So I, really, I, I prefer, if we're going to go one dumbbell workouts, 17.1 is the, is the best one they've done. Mm -hmm. As far as a repeat goes. Honestly, would, if you, if, if you take, sorry, to cut you off, but if you take 21.1 and just make it handstand pushups and make it a set, make it a seven minute time cap. Boom. Agreed. Yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, because um, that is, I, like, I'm fine. Like, I don't mind, like, the, the change of movement thing, but it just felt so, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like the timing of, like, all right, we're going to put wall walks into this, you know? Right. I, I didn't like it as the first open workout. Right. Or, you know, or you could put handstand walking in there, too. That'd be, that'd make it interesting, but it'd be kind of a tough one, especially for the first one, you right. know, um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have loved that either, but that would have been a, a cool test. Um, but yeah, I think if you just take it and just make it handstand pushups and make it a, a time cap seven, time cap eight, you know, obviously the, if you make it, I mean, you can make it strict handstand pushups and then like the, the high level athletes, it's going to be not quite as easy for them. I feel like it would have to be strict because you're only going up to 21. Like I'm, I can do 21 handstand pushups when broken and I'm not an elite athlete by any measure. Or just add in like another round and make it one, uh, take away that round of one. That's kind of pointless, I guess. Yeah. But go three, six, nine, 15, 21, 27, 33. Yeah. And then make yeah, it a 15 minute before. workout again. Yeah. No, I would have liked that much more. Do 330 double unders. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I think that's a good place for us to leave off. Um, I have one, one more, one more comment. What's up? I was I was surprised that they went with two couplets to start it off. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, we're going to see. It's not going to be thrusters and pull-ups. Like when I was looking, I was like, there's no way Castro is going to do three couplets. Yeah, like I, he's going to do something different. I was very surprised that they went with two in a row. Like that's that is not normal. Huh. So, well, uh, anyway, uh, we went over our hints. We went over how we feel about it. Uh, we'll be checking in with you guys again next week to sort of wrap up, wrap things up. I'll let you guys know how we did, how we felt about it. Um, but in the meantime, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, for our people all over the world, we would love to hear from you guys. Shoot us a DM, shoot us a message. Um, in the meantime, follow us on Instagram, uh, follow us on Facebook, and you can check out all of our podcasts in video format on YouTube. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Good luck.